Hello Unity fans and welcome back to my Hexmap game development series. In the last video, which I've linked to in the top right, we started out on a journey that will eventually significantly impact our game's functionality and foundation mechanics. We divided the hexes into segments and started expanding the code to allow most actions to be applied to individual segments rather than the hex as a whole. But some unfinished business was carried over. Firstly, since the Bezier functions controlling the movement are now used on irregular starting and ending directions, as well as irregular distances between control points, the walking speed isn't smooth like before, when we forced standard directions and distances by working with whole hexes at a time. Secondly, our path finding is still based on hexes, so setting paths by segment was still performed manually. We will address the first topic today and the second one in the next video. There are many great tutorials and examples of Bezier functions available online. For example, this series by Sebastian Lag, if that's the correct pronunciation. I've also found this free online book to be great at explaining how and why things work. And it even allows you to play around with the parameters to see how it changes things. You can also peek behind the graphs at the actual code, which helps if you're a programmer. I'll put links to these in the description. What I've done by moving from hex to segment as my basic unit, is move from a quadratic curve to a cubic one. Also, as a result, the directions and distances aren't standard anymore. This brings about a bit more complexity in the formulas. Note how the version with only two control points reduces to a straight line, since it merely interpolates between those two points. The higher order versions just interpolate between more and more points, but this isn't too difficult to add on. The more important issue is that some parts of the walking path now goes by too fast while others take longer than they should. This happens because Bezier functions progress slower through bends than through straight parts and because the distance between the control points are now variable. We can get around this by transforming the time-controlled progression into a distance-controlled progression. In other words, we divide the curve into small segments and calculate the nonlinear points in time that we should be finishing each of the segments if movement speed was constant or if distance traveled increases linearly with time. You will note that the previous method calculated the Bezier points as it progressed, frame by frame. However, the new method has to calculate a grid of points beforehand in order to be able to find the correct time points that make the distances equal. This means more processing at once, but these calculations are quite fast, especially since we will be calculating only a short part of the path at any one point anyway. Also, you can decide how dense you need this grid to be. You don't need a point for every frame. You can interpolate between the two closest points per frame. A fairly low number of grid points still looks very smooth, as you can see. This is how we can achieve this. Firstly, we have a class to store the distance traveled, the point in 3D space, and the direction at that point. Now we'll create an array of evenly spaced points from the four control points supplied. The first point we save is the first control point itself, looking in the direction of the second control point. Then we let time progress in fixed steps, the size of which is a function of the approximate length of the curve as well as how densely you want the grid to be spaced. As soon as you get to one of the grid points, you add the position and direction to the list of points, catering for the fact that you may have overshot the grid point slightly. Then keep going like this until you reach the end. Since we'll only actually walk 50% of the path before dropping the first point and adding the next, we don't have to calculate the grid up to 100%. So I've added a proportion parameter to specify how much of the grid to populate. I've kept it at 100% to allow us to visualize the complete grid using this temporary bit of code which adds a little sphere on the grid points. Now in our continuous travel method, which adapts our original hex-based travel method, we calculate the evenly spaced points of the first Bezier curve, 
then start walking along it. For every frame, we interpolate between the two closest grid points. So the total number of calls to the Bezier functions can actually be quite small, while we still have smooth transitions. When we get to halfway through the path, we drop the first point, add on the next one in the queue, and add the dummy control point to ensure the new starting direction equals the previous direction. This was discussed in the previous video. Then we keep walking along this new grid. No matter how far apart the control points are, this method will ensure that the same distance is always travelled in the same length of time. We could adjust this slightly to let the unit start gradually at the beginning of the path and stop gradually when it's close to the end by simply ramping the passing of time up and down, but we'll do that later when resources and buildings are already in place. There are also a few more things to build in, like adjusting the map visibility, which can easily be adapted from the original travel method as well. But we've now covered the most important parts of getting the walking and turning to be smooth between irregular spaced segments. Our units aren't prevented from passing over a hex just because it contains some objects or another unit anymore. If there's enough open space, they can use that to get around. While this adds considerable complexity, it clears the way for easily and seamlessly including many more options in terms of movement and access. In the next video, we will consider the pathfinding in terms of segments rather than hexes and see how we can let our units search for these paths automatically. Please subscribe if you'd like to continue on this exciting journey with me. Goodbye.